Penn State fans, it's a huge week. Like the hugest week. I don't know if hugest is a word, Johnny, but this is a pretty big week. Penn State, USC, unbeaten Penn State, now number four in the country. Shout out Vanderbilt. Um, and it's we're going to be heading west very shortly. We're recording this a little before 2 o'clock on Monday. Just heard from James Franklin. The Trojans uh, now have two losses. They're three and two. They could easily be 5-0. and oh. They let one get away at Minnesota. Earlier, they had let one get away at Michigan. But they're at home, Johnny. This is a big game. We heard from James. What's the first thing we should be talking about when we're, when we're assessing this game? Bob, well, first and foremost, uh, I, I'm surprised that James was able to hear my question over Zoom today during his press conference. Uh, if you, if the listeners can't tell, I'm a little hoarse. Uh, you know, speak, the voice is shot after uh, after going to the Phillies uh, yeah. game two win on Sunday. I knew you. I know you were out in Pittsburgh for the, yeah. for the Cowboys game. So, yeah. Uh, you know, the blue white breakdown. We're playing hurt a little bit uh, on Monday. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of our vocal cords, uh, so apologies mm-hmm. in advance to the listeners and the That's watchers. That's code, people. By the way, that is code. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're picking up what Johnny's trying to say. I'm aware of it. And Johnny, first of all, didn't mean to cut you off. You never, Johnny, never apologize for Red October. Never. I, I won't apologize for Red October, uh, but I will <laughs> apologize for how scratchy and terrible my voice might sound right now. Uh, I, I couldn't help but lose myself on the back-to-back home runs by Bryson Casty, uh, one of the more wild games of any sport I've ever been to. So, um, Great. but after Penn State beats UCLA this weekend, uh, you know they won twenty-seven to eleven. It wasn't as clean offensively, I think, as maybe they would have hoped and starting off a little slow. A part of that might have been, uh, it definitely was, uh, you know, attributed to at least, uh, you know, Nick Singleton's absence, his injury absence, which I think was the primary thing, or at least one of the big things, one of my big yeah. takeaways from James Franklin's Monday press conference. You know, we heard after the UCLA game that James Franklin, you know, thought that Nick Singleton, you know, who took a beating against Illinois a couple of weeks yeah. ago now, uh, that he thought Nick Singleton would play. He was absent from practice on Wednesday. James James told us uh, today that you know he was limited on Thursday and during Friday's walkthroughs. Um, but still, even though he wasn't 100, you know Singleton was expected to go against UCLA. James Franklin and the staff found out after pregame warmups that he would not play. Now speaking to James on Monday, he said that they are very confident, quote unquote, very confident that Nicholas Singleton will suit up and play this weekend against USC. Uh, and, and that's from, you know, just how close he was to playing against UCLA. Yeah. And then also uh, Franklin speaking to Singleton on Sunday at the facility and seeing how he's doing after not playing against the Bruins. And I, I think it's a huge deal for Penn State to get him back uh, into the rotation along with Katron Allen against a USC defense that uh, got bludgeoned on the ground at Michigan, gave up, uh, almost 200 yards on the ground uh, to Minnesota in that upset loss uh, in Minneapolis mm-hmm. on Saturday night, uh, and so you know, look for Penn State to continue to try to ground, you know, you know, ground, you know, the the, the ground game, grind the ground game, geez, uh, and and really make this a physical game and a physical approach, yeah. uh, you know, similar to what they've done the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I. I don't know. It, this might just be me, Johnny. I'm gonna I'm gonna run this by you, but I am sure. still mystified, struggling with like the whole Singleton timeline and how this came about. And this it might just be me because James keeps saying he thought on Thursday he was gonna play. He thought on Friday he was gonna play, and then I think after the game, he said after the initial warm up, I think Penn State has a couple of different warm up sessions. I believe he said the trainer and running backs coach Jay Wan Sider came in and told him he was going to be unavailable. I it's it's just kind of a weird uh, thing to try and interpret on my end, and I only say that because if you're a Penn State fan, like I just don't know. I don't know. I think I might have phrased it a little bit differently and just said, "Hey, we were hopeful at midweek we were going to have him, but he couldn't go." But it it just sounds a little weird. Like Nick was suited up. He looked like he was kind of disconsolate on the sideline that he couldn't play. But I I just don't know, I guess, what happened in the last 
24 hours, like from Friday uh, afternoon to Saturday afternoon. And I, I'm just wondering if I would, I think I might phrase it a little bit differently because I think that, I, I don't know, it, it, I think it could have been handled a little bit better. And James, if you're listening, I apologize. But it's, it's just been a very curious explanation about why they didn't have him. The bottom line, though, is I think he's going to play, right, against USC. And I think it was probably smart to not play him against UCLA because even though the game was a little bit ugly and the defense was limited because he's such an impactful player as a runner, receiver, and even as a pass blocker, right? That that was an issue against UCLA. I think they made the right decision. I just it just it's a little murky trying to figure this out. Yeah, I mean, look, I think James Franklin in the post-game press conference made it pretty clear that it wasn't his decision to hold yeah. Nick out, you know, uh, you know, saying that he finds out that Nick is not going to play. Uh, speaking to Catron yes. Allen after the game, speaking to Catron after the game, Catron said, you know, something to the effect of, like, when Nick found out he couldn't play. Uh, and so – <laughs> that leads me to believe it might have been a medical staff decision to hold him out. Yeah. Maybe it was a maybe it was a Jay Wan Sider decision. Maybe it was Nick uh, himself, you know, deciding that you know what, I'm not 100. percent Maybe I'm 95. Maybe I'm 90. percent I've got USC. Right. And we've got USC coming up next week. Uh, you know, they they could get by, and they did get by. You know, without him against UCLA. So uh, yeah. I don't know if we'll ever know the, the full extent of, of whose decision that was uh, for Nick Singleton not yeah. to play against UCLA. But uh, the most important thing for Penn State, for Singleton, for everyone involved, is that it sounds like he's going to play uh, this weekend against the Trojans. And um, obviously yeah. it's a big deal for Nick uh, to be on a big stage like that. But more importantly for Penn State to have one of the best running backs in the country in your backfield, a guy who was averaging – 7.7 yards per carry that's yeah. fifth in the country among running backs who have at least 50 carries going against a USC run defense that just got ran all over uh, by yes. Minnesota. I mean, they gave up 290 yards to Michigan mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, this is a, a USC run defense yeah. that lost Bear Alexander, a, defense, mm -hmm. a talented defensive tackle who wasn't starting for them, but was a piece. And so they're already a little thin on the front four. Uh, and this is a real yeah. opportunity for Nick and Catron to get rolling and keep, continue rolling because they have been rolling. Right. I uh, agree a hundred percent. I got, I, I actually made it back to watch the second half of the, the uh, USC Minnesota game in Harrisburg. I know you were, you were, I think you were hunkered down in state college. I think you probably saw some of it too. It was striking to see I, all, everything you said is right about uh, USC and the run defense. And they were, uh, they were they were struggling mightily against the Minnesota team that is not, I wouldn't even I wouldn't describe them as dangerous but they do what they do and they're tough at home. PJ's a good coach. I still think though, Johnny, USC had that. I thought USC had Michigan right where they wanted them in Ann Arbor. Couldn't close the deal. I also thought they had they had Minnesota. There was a, there was a, there was a spot in that game where I think USC was leading. They were driving. And uh, one of their offensive tackles gave up a sack uh, when they were, he, they were the the quarterback uh, was going to throw it deep, and that might have been the game. Yeah, credit Minnesota for for turning the game around after that and leaning on the run. But USC, I thought they had them. My point though is they're they're a two loss team, but you could we could easily be talking about a five and O team if they had just finished games with leads in the fourth quarter. Uh, they did beat LSU. There are, I think they're going to be a problem for Penn State. Uh, what What are your thoughts on the line? It was early. It was three and a half Penn State. I just checked now. It's 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 around five now. It might even be five and a half. What are your? It's, I mean, it's it's the logistics of the trip for for Penn State will be challenging. They're going to fly out Thursday out of Harrisburg. James did not sound really happy about that because they really can't. They could not fly when they wanted to fly, I think, out of the State College Airport. But leaving Thursday compared to leaving Friday, I think, is significant. Uh, UCLA played uh, – they, they got into State College less than 24 hours before that game. They played really hard. Um, the point spread, the travel logistics, the matchup, and kind of where USC is, they can run it, they can throw it. Their defense is a bend-but-don't-break defense. Your thoughts on all of it? Yeah, I, I think the spread, I think the line is fair. Uh, if it gets up, you know, closer to like seven or eight or whatever, yeah. I think it gets a little hairy. Uh, but I think I think where it is right now, 
uh, is pretty fair. Given what we've seen from Penn State, you know, the last two weeks against Illinois and UCLA, again, two games where you scored 27 against UCLA, 21 against Illinois. And, you know, again, if you were scoreboard watching across the country and see that, yeah. uh, we'd be a little concerned with Penn State's offense or the, yeah. you know, Penn State as a whole. Uh, but I would say in those two games, really, at no point, at least that I feel like Penn State was going to lose either of those two games. Yeah. I think they controlled them well, and they were clearly the better team. On the flip side, USC, you know, they have a, I mean, they being Lincoln Riley, uh, has a go on the road and play well problem. Uh, yeah. you know, a little bit different at home. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, we saw them come back and, and uh, you know, handle Wisconsin a couple weeks ago in L.A. Uh, and so, yeah, <clears throat> I think USC presents some problems from an explosive standpoint. Uh, you know, they didn't, they weren't that all that explosive against Minnesota uh, in the passing right. game. Uh, and I think a, a lot of that has to do with their tackle play, offensive tackle play. I think yeah. that's a match to watch this weekend. I don't. I know you and Max will probably be previewing this a little bit more in depth later in the week. Uh -huh. But that's something that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. After you know, we saw what Abdul Carter can do as a as an edge rusher, really, you know, his entire career at Penn State getting after the quarterback. Deny Dennis Sutton was an absolute menace <laughs> yeah. uh, to UCLA over the weekend. And then Zane Duran is playing his best football right he now is. on the interior, getting after the quarterback and running backs in the backfield. And I worry that USC's uh, offensive line is not going to be able to block those guys. And that's where Penn State can not only win, um, but in a certain situation, cover, uh, you know, this weekend in L.A. So that's that's what I'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing that matchup uh, kind of play out. And I think the line is pretty fair, given what we've seen from Penn State and USC, respectively, so far. Yeah, yeah. Um... I wrote about it right after the game. I am more than a little bit concerned about Penn State's offense and their starts. And it even, even I hate to say it, the final score was 56 nothing against Kent State. Johnny, it was 7 nothing six minutes before halftime. And then Kent State just kind of wore out. They're, they're not, they could not match up with, with, with Penn State's athletes. My, my concern, though, is I just I feel like there are some there are some possessions where they get a little bit too cute early in games when they have blue chip talent yeah. and just get the lead make the other team react to it but you know 7 nothing against Kent State late in the first half Illinois is a good team it was 7-7 at halftime <clears throat> and even uh even on Saturday they the first two possessions were not anything to be proud of not they're not going to be showing that game tape uh they might be burning it, that offense. I think they're much more capable. They have a lot of weapons. Um, but at some point, if they start, if they keep starting slow, uh, especially on the road, it's going to, it's going to bite them. It is. So <clears throat> are you worried about it? And I say that knowing that Singleton did not play, but he did play against Illinois. He was on the field against, against Kent State. Are you worried about that? And one more thing, you mentioned Abdul and Deny. They are very thin at edge rusher and those guys were in the game way way too long uh against ucla that last drive um other than maybe the final four plays they were on the field <clears throat> I, I think if i think if you're penn state you're the coaching staff i think if you're a penn state fan you saw it i think i would worry about that because if anything happens to those two guys or they get tired late in the game um and it's it is a game um as good as they are I, I, I worry about kind of the, the workload, and I, I do worry about Penn State's offense early in games. I think those are two legitimate concerns. Yeah, definitely. On, on the defensive end topic first, uh, I think a part of that and, and is a little bit of Malachi Williams, Max Granville, these freshmen who they yeah. would rather not throw in at the yeah. end of a game that they already won uh, and, you know, tack on a game that might work against their red shirt. Uh, I know that you know, the health and safety of Abdul Carter uh, and yeah. Deny Dennis Sutton should probably be first and foremost in that conversation when, when we're looking at that. But I think that's a consideration. I do think they're a little thin. Uh, the defense has played a lot of snaps this, uh, this year, uh, and that's something to consider definitely going into the USC game. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the flip side, mm -hmm. the, the offense starting off slow. I am concerned, but I think I'm confident enough in Drew Aller, uh, in Andy Kotelnicki, what they've done so far, uh, that it'll get sorted out. Uh, mm -hmm. I really do. I think it'll get sorted out. And, you know, the way that they've 
finished the first half, I think has yeah. been really good this year. You know, four out of yeah. five games so far this year. They've executed two minute drills, uh, three touchdowns and a field goal. Yep. Um, to finish uh, the first half in four of those five games. I think it was just Illinois that they didn't score at the end of the first half. Right. And that gives you momentum going into the half. It gives you a lead going into the, the bigger lead going into the half. Uh, and then coming out the second half, they've done a good job too. So that middle eight that James Franklin talks about, uh, the end of the second quarter, start of the third quarter, I think they've done a really good job both on offense and defense. Uh, and that's something that, that carries over. That's a confidence thing uh, that can carry over uh, to a big game like this weekend on the road at USC. Yeah, no, all of it's true. They've been very, very good late in the first half, uh, you know, inside of two minutes. Well, you know, it, even at West Virginia, the, the, yeah. the long throw to Amari Evans that kind of came out of nowhere. Hey, they all count, but they've been very productive. Um, your and phone, you're right your phone is buzzing off the hook right now. Bro. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't on know. Silent. What are you I, doing? I, don't, I, can't, I can't mute it, I don't think. Because it's actually on my computer too. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I can't really do anything, or else uh, you won't hear my uh, dulcet tone. So I apologize, Penn State fans. But um, you're right about you. <laughs> you're right. You're right about uh, you're. I I am going to have some words for some people. Um, you're right about their their effectiveness late in the first half. I just I'm a little curious. I'm very I'm very intrigued to see this this. Um, this defense minus Kevin Winston uh, go against – this is going to be the best passing game yeah. they probably face all year. I mean, it, especially out there. I mean, West Virginia was, was, a, was, a, was a challenge, but they're not really – they're not going to beat people, right, with their passing game. It's the dual threat quarterback. It's the offensive line. It's the running backs. The Bowling Green, uh, the Bowling Green offense, I think, was pretty good. And it is it is proven to be, but I still think this one's even a little bit better with the athletes and the running back they have. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to see how Penn State's defense does uh, against this test. It's going to be a stiff test. Um, but I wanted to ask you, the reason I bring that up is I think James was asked about Zaki Wheatley today. Yeah. And with Winston out, he's clearly stepped up. He had one of the biggest plays I know we're talking about UCLA. He had one of the biggest plays, I thought, in the game on Saturday with that fourth and one tackle for loss when the game's still scoreless in the first quarter. I mean, UCLA was kind of getting a little bit brave, and that was a huge stop. I mean, he he stepped in, he stepped up and drilled that tack, the the uh, running back. That was a that was a really good hit. And I do think he's getting better and better. Um, so what where are you with Zaki Wheatley as a starter? And also, where are you, Johnny, with Penn State's three safety look when they don't have the 50B kit, like as a, as a third corner? Do you feel good about three safeties, or do you think against USC when they go when they go to a five DB look, the third the third the extra defender should it be a corner? Yeah, uh, I do think it should be a corner, um, especially with the weapons that USC yeah. has and, and a quarterback like Miller Moss who you know, has been pressured a lot this season and has been pressured yes. into some mistakes, but uh, he's a damn good quarterback. And I think probably the best quarterback that Penn State will have faced so far. One of my main takeaways, and I wrote about this on Saturday after the UCLA game, was the play of the safeties after the loss of K.J. Winston. Yeah, uh, We saw Jalen Reed against Illinois, nine tackles, was in on a couple of sacks late in the game. Uh, Zaki Wheatley, it was his turn against UCLA, uh, seven tackles, three solo. You mentioned the yeah. TFL. Uh, that was a game-changing play uh, early against the Bruins. Um, I will say a lot of that work the last two games for those two guys, a lot of the positives – have been in the run game, have been defending the run. And so yeah. USC presents a different problem. USC presents a different problem through the air. Uh, and I would not be surprised at all if they're targeting uh, those safeties trying to take some deep shots and testing them early. Uh, Zaki specifically has you know grown a lot over the last year. Uh, I mean, it was this time la around this time last year where, you know, he got burnt for a touchdown against Indiana and then, you know, really didn't see the field much after that. And his snaps waned as the rest of the season progressed. Um, he has improved, uh, but this is going to be a really tough test for both Zaki and Jalen Reed. If Dejon Lane, the true freshman, is yeah. in the game, that's going to be a test for him. Wouldn't be surprised if Cam Miller, when they go to that 5-DB look, that 4 2 five, wouldn't be surprised if Cam Miller is that line, is that extra DB. Yeah, Johnny, so uh, 
so you you mentioned Max. Max and I, I guess, we'll, we'll preview and, and have our picks later in the week on the Blue White Breakdown. Uh, it's a short week for for everyone, right? It's, it's a short week for Penn State's uh, players and coaches because they got to get out to the West Coast. Short short week for all the media. We'll probably do that on Wednesday. We'll talk about the game. But since I only have you one time until after the game, the other thing I, I definitely wanted to get to get to with you. Um, on this episode of the Blue White Breakdown is Anthony Donko left the game, the right tackle. They had to use Rucci at right tackle. Honestly, I mean, I'm sure in, in pass protection, I was, I, I was, I think he needs to get a little better. Now, um, they didn't have Singleton to help on some chips. It was the true freshman. I think he struggled at at least one play and it impacted Drew. I don't know what... <laughs> James isn't going to tell us. I don't know if Donko's going to be able to go at right tackle, but if it is Rucci for a full game against USC, and they do have some defensive issues, if you're trying to scheme that up, like how much help do you think you have to give him? Do you think he actually played better than maybe uh, a couple of snaps? I mean, he, he was on the field a lot, but are you worried at all about that? Uh, I am. Uh, yeah, I thought Nolan Rucci struggled in pass protection. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Quentin Martin. Uh, there was a, a missed chip block. Uh, I mean, like Quentin is a talented kid. Yep. And he's good. He has a bright future yeah. at Penn State, made some plays in the passing game. But it was a total missed chip that led to a third down sack. Yeah. And those were mistakes that I don't think Nick Singleton would have made if he was right. in there. I mean, we saw, we saw against Illinois. Uh, Singleton put that edge rusher on his behind uh, Mm -hmm. before going out and catching a pass. Like that's the difference right there. It was was a similar play. Uh, And so, yeah, I am, I am a little concerned if uh, Anthony Donko can't go at right tackle. I think the adjustment that you would see there uh, is maybe some more tight end help. Uh, And if Nick is in there, Nick can provide better pass protection, um, you know, in in that's uh, in those scenarios, but you know, Tyler Warren, Dinkins, um, you know, I think those guys would be more in line uh, to help uh, in obvious passing downs before getting out and trying to catch a pass themselves. Yeah, Johnny, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think Penn State's frontline talent is is as good as, I mean, worthy of them being in top five consideration. I was going to ask yeah. you about your ballot, but I, I just am a little concerned now as the season rolls on a little bit about their depth, right? Um, you know, Andrew Rappelier is out. Uh, Kevin Wins- Kevin Winston is out. You know, Anthony Donko might be out. And it just, as the game goes on, I, I think those, I mean, they're going to need some guys, uh, especially on the road against a good team. They're going to have to step up. So, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I think that they've gotten a lot better with their depth and they're definitely playing a lot of young guys. But um, even though the names, other than Winston, even though maybe the names aren't like, you know, on everyone's radar, they have lost some players that can really help them. And if they were fully healthy, um, I think they would be, I feel much better about this matchup. I think you, uh, Penn State should be favored, but I do think this is going to be a desperate USC team, right? Two losses that they could have won. I think everyone, I think that program realizes they cannot afford another loss. So this is going to be, I would expect you're going to get their A plus game. And I, I think Penn State will be ready for it, but they haven't been on the road since August. We're in the second week in uh, in the second week of October. I think it's very challenging, Johnny. I just wanted to ask you though. Um, you, Penn State is number four in the AP poll. Um, I know I know how much work you put into your ballot. Um, how did you have them? Uh, how stunned were you by the Alabama result? Because I think it does matter. But um, did, did you have them that high? And do you think do you, do you consider them? I guess to be the fourth best team in the country. Yeah, Bob. I mean, it wasn't just the Alabama result. I mean, it was a crazy weekend of college football. Alabama yeah. loses to Vanderbilt. Diego Pavia Hive, stand up. That kid was unbelievable. Tennessee loses to Arkansas. Mizzou gets their doors blown off against AM. <laughs> we talked about USC losing to Minnesota. Michigan lost uh, at Washington. Yeah. They were actually underdogs. Uh, at Washington, I think that kind of says everything you need to know yeah. about this Michigan yeah. team. But you know, a lot of action, and it was really difficult to put together the poll. I think in in my time as an AP voter, I think it was the most difficult um, trying yeah. to sort everything out. But I did have Penn State number four. Uh, the, the, the the top four that I had on my ballot was the top four on the AP poll. It was Texas, Ohio State, Oregon, Penn State. Um, 
right now, like would, would I pick Penn State to beat Alabama or Georgia? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I think in terms of resume, in terms of staying undefeated, like I know James Franklin, it's, right. it's kind of coach, it's coach speaky where he's like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of teams across college football that, you know, are sad on Saturday nights. And and so we're going to cherish wins and all that. Um it's, yeah. It is kind of sneaky, but, you know, after you watch a, a Saturday mm-hmm. like that unfold where Alabama is a, a three touchdown plus favorite at Vanderbilt and they lose outright. And not only that, it was wire to wire, like Vanderbilt just beat them yeah. straight up. It wasn't a lucky, fluky game. When you see stuff like that happen, yeah. it's, you know, there, there's a lot of value in winning. <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to do in college football. So that's kind of how I have my ballot. And and I think I think Penn State being a number four is fair, but they're going to be tested this weekend. Yeah. All right, Johnny. Before I let you go here on the Blue White Breakdown, check us out on Spotify. All of the all the streaming devices. We're here a couple times a week. Johnny and I always go early in the week. Max, Ralph, and I will be on later in the week. Um, don't forget, Penn State fans. Uh, Consider being a tech subscriber, a Penn Live Penn State tech subscriber. Uh, we communicate on a daily basis with you guys. We try and get news to you guys before we actually put it on Penn Live. It's it's worth it's worth the uh, investment. I always enjoy interacting with those guys. We do some mailbags with our subscribers. Johnny, before I let you go, I know you're pumped about your fills. It's one one as we talk about this. I won't say anything to mush you. Um, I wanted to ask you though, if you weren't covering Penn State. Uh, and USC this weekend. How excited would you be to see Oregon? I think it's Oregon. Isn't it Oregon, Ohio State this weekend? I think that's right. And I know you make your picks later in the week. I do not. I do not want to spoil it. Do you have like one storyline for that game that you that's compelling for you? The storyline that's compelling for me in that game is that we really haven't had to see Ohio State and Chip Kelly's offense show anything to this point. I mean, in their in their wins, like Iowa didn't test them enough to really make them show their hand. And I think Dan Lanning kind of wishes that game was closer because right. I think they I think they ran like I, I watched a good bit of that Iowa Ohio State game because the Phillies sucked on Saturday. Um, you know, I, I think Will Howard ran like two or three <laughs> like two or three design runs. Um, <clears throat> They just haven't, they haven't, Ohio State hasn't had to show much Mm -hmm. on offense. And so I'm intrigued to see what that offense looks like because I think they've been pretty vanilla through the first month and a half of the season. Um, And also on the flip side, Dylan Gabriel, I watched that game on Friday night and that kid is allergic to ball security in the red zone, apparently. I think there's, I think Dylan Gabriel is a good quarterback. He is a good college quarterback. The reason why he's not in the NFL yeah. right now is the reason why he's still in college as a six-year guy. Uh, and so of Ohio State's defense and Caleb Downs in the secondary, if they're able to put him in inopportune situations and be opportun- be opportunistic as a defense, um, I, I haven't made my pick yet, but I do like Ohio State this weekend. All right, again, like I know you make your picks on – I believe it. I believe it's on Friday. Um, I always read them. Uh, I'm trying to make some money just like everyone else. I recommend everyone follow your picks because you know you, you you're all about that action. It's almost it's almost time for maxion. I know you like that too. But... Oh yeah, I think I'm 500 on this. You're due. I'm just I know I can. See that. You're gonna go on a heater, man, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be red. You're gonna be in the red. It's literally red October, Johnny. Anyway. I'm rambling on. Uh, Penn, big, big, huge game, obviously. We'll be out there. Max, myself, Johnny, Joe Hermit, our intrepid photographer, will be out there. Can't wait. Hopefully, we have easy travel. Hope I didn't just mush us again. Anyway, Johnny, good chatting with you. Looking forward to see you out on the West Coast. Go, Phils. I'm sorry, when you said the Phil sucked, I almost lost. I almost had to walk away from my computer. They, they did. They they sucked ass on Saturday. It was terrible. I know, I know. Oh, oh you should have seen my car ride home with Joe Hermit. Talk about angry. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Um All right. So I guess we're I guess I'll see you in about 13 minutes. Yeah, did you hit stop on the record? Yeah. I did not. No, I was going to say, yeah, because it hasn't popped up.